Welcome to the Journey Podcast, the podcast that's all about you. The podcast that interviews interesting guests and listens to their journeys of where they've been, where they are now, and where they are going. Well, welcome to the Journey Podcast. Today we are joined by Tim Smith of Digital Operations Group. It's really great to have Tim here. Tim uh, works alongside of companies like Astoria, uh, just helping support uh, the type of work uh, that we do by helping us develop the network infrastructure. Uh, And he can tell you a lot more about what they do. But it's been great uh, working with Tim. About five years, I think, we've known each other and and worked. We might have met before that, but officially working with each other these last five years. And uh, So I'm really excited to have him on the Journey podcast because, like anybody else, uh, you have a really neat story of the journey that you got here. And uh, so I think it's something worthwhile sharing. So uh, welcome. Glad you're here today, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, tell us a little bit about your business. What is your business? Uh, what do you do? So Digital Operations Group, um, <laughs> we are basically the boots on the ground for the IT industry. That's what we call ourselves, um, or the hands and feet of IT most IT guys, like yourself, would rather be typing on a computer, I think, than doing climbing ladders and hanging equipment and setting it all up. So that's what we do. We, uh, we run the cables. We connect it. Um, kind of really specialize in connecting, running fiber optics and, and network cables and things like that. But just pretty much all, all of that stuff, that's, that's what we do. So It seems like most IT guys, it may not even be that they don't particularly enjoy it. They just don't have time. There's a ton that has to be done on the IT mm-hmm. side, that they just don't have the time. And then you also help with staffing capability, too, a little bit, because, right. you know, we aren't doing these projects every single day. So right. we can call you in for a week, help right. us get the big project done, and then we can scale back our staff again. Sure. You help with that as well. The other thing is we, we have all the right tools to do the job. And there's a lot of tools that go with what we do, whereas yeah. so you don't have to have all the right tools. Our trucks are set up so that... We go out and just do what we do. We don't carry extra computers or or things like that. That's that's stuff you guys do, and we don't have to worry about that. So So tell me what the type of, like, things you get into. You're talking about fiber optics. You're talking about Mm -hmm. network cabling. So so we do um, the network cabling. We do full network cleanups. We do uh, fiber optic builds for larger manufacturers. We will do... um, Security cameras, in some cases, or we'll work with other contractors to do the, their security cameras, so we'll help with that. Um, I, we do spend a lot of time cleaning up old legacy stuff. Mm. So we'll uh, go in and basically take a, an old telephone room or telephone network room, take out all of the old equipment, put in all new, or take out all, most of it's taking out all the old equipment. But we'll put in the new stuff for an IT company that comes in. Um, we'll do like I said, the security cameras, some access control wiring. Um, we spend a lot of time connecting people, um, either for wireless bridges or, or fiber for large plants. So network cable can only go 328 feet, they say. So with that being said, if you've got a big plant and you need to connect a piece of equipment way down on the other side, we'll, we'll run that fiber optics for them. And the important aspect of that is uh, coordinating it with the IT because you just can't unplug a cable and plug it back in and right. know where it goes. Just because it plugs into that port doesn't mean that it actually does anything does for anything. you. Right. So you can help clean up those spaghetti messes. And then I can see them in my mind right now. I've walked into so many. I'm like, oh, no, it's a spider web. And... Not only do I have to figure out how this stuff works, and, and then we have to clean it all up and make it look right. So right. That, and we label everything. So a lot of times people are like, I don't know what goes to where, so we'll go in and test every wire in the building, tell people whether or not it's capable of data, capable of a full gig, or no, that's only going to do a 10-100, I'm sorry. And then we'll label it, which is big, because the people go, I don't know, you know, Sue wants to move her desk over here. How, which wire is that? We don't, we don't know, so... That's what we do for it. And that's great for the IT, too, because uh, it makes troubleshooting way right. quicker. You can say, oh, this is down, 
and you can even walk into the room or if you're trying to remotely do it without having to go to the site you can tell very quickly okay this is the issue Mm -hmm. Uh, and if it's clearly organized right uh, it makes it all a lot easier that's that's really big for us is and a lot of people like you know how a lot of the network equipment is just like dumped in there right and some people oh it works it's worked fine for 20 years well yes but the more data you want to put on something, the cleaner it really needs to be for, for repairs, for the connections. If you don't do the, all the connections, right back, back when we started doing IT, probably both of us work, you, not even all the wire, all the pins, all the wires and the cables were used. Right, yeah. Well, now, with the new power over Ethernet, with all the different devices, you have to use all eight wires. If you've got one open, it's not going to work right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and doing it in an organized fashion, so I know, like... If a switch goes down, and I need to swap that switch, mm-hmm. you know, it's Wednesday afternoon, <laughs> and the whole plant's down, or half the plant's down, we got to swap that switch. If I don't have to rewire everything, if I can literally slide it in, plug it in, and go, click, click, that click. makes everybody's day right. goes a lot better. There's a lot less productivity loss for mm-hmm. everybody uh, across the board and that's what makes a company like you very valuable of understanding how to do that well and getting the right results every single time so tell us a little bit how you came into this role today so um, I I worked at AT&T for 20 years as an outside technician um, doing data installs which so uh-huh. when I started I knew nothing about IT I learned what I know about, and I still don't know that much about IT, honestly. My specialty is cabling. But what I learned from IT, I actually learned from AT&T's clients, my clients, meeting them, talking to them on site. I think that's probably, might be how we met the first time, was actually... Quite I, possibly. I, I think you were at AT&T when I met you the yeah. first time. So that, you know, that's what I did. Um, I was third generation phone man. My grandfather and my dad were both linemen. And then my dad went into special, special services, which was the start of the data services. Um, you know, 64 kilobit circuits. Ooh, ah, really fast ones. Really, really, well, right. for the day. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, then after I was there about, uh, I think it was about five years, I moved into T1s, which was the high-speed data department back then. Good old 1.5 megabit circuits, and that was fast, you know, when I started doing those. So I actually started in the group, that's where, that's where Digital Operations Group, the name came from. So Digital Operations Group was a department in Ameritech, which was then became SBC, then wow. became AT&T. They didn't keep the department. It changed names four or five times, but we kept, they kept calling us the dog techs, the Digital Operations Group techs. When I decided to start my company, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it Digital Operations Group. So. The name wasn't taken anywhere legally, so no. There you there's go. there's only one other digital operations group LLC in the country, at least when I checked, and he's down in uh, I think North Carolina, and works with the government doing. We'll tag him IT. on the video. So yeah, <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta do it if you're not doing a good lookup, and you just went through that, yeah, right? Just for sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. With the rebranding, it right. is important to differentiate yourself for the right. marketing side. So. so yeah, that's how I got started. Well, that's awesome. So tell me, through that process, what's one thing that happened that you didn't expect Uh, along the way here? One thing that happened and I didn't expect. Yeah, as in like with what happened with digital operations? Yeah, digital operations group specifically. Ah, Let's see. Well, there's a lot of things that happened. That the entire when I started the business, I decided that I was going to figure out and do whatever it took to make it happen which I had lots of good plans and most of those didn't go right, but that, that's okay because I learned from them and went a different direction each time and had to grow. So something I didn't expect was probably just, um, I don't know, there's, there's just a lot of things. That the business has, has evolved com- considerably since it started. I guess the biggest one that I didn't expect was that I was gonna be a salesperson. Oh. <laughs> So I was a technician for 20 years, and then even before that, when I was in the Navy, I was a technician. And I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't think I was going to be a salesperson, but turns out I am the salesperson. And uh, I actually like it. I, I enjoy being doing, doing the sales and meeting with clients. I always have. I just didn't know that that's what true sales was, was just 
meeting people and helping them out with their challenges. Yeah, and that's an important aspect of being a business owner. Somebody has to sell something for the business. Every business has to have one. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you don't have one and you're the business owner, no guess sale. what? No sales, no business. No sales, no business. <laughs> Somehow you have to sell it. Right. So tell us a little bit more about that. You know, you, you're in the sales business development. What's a common myth about your job or <laughs> uh, expertise that you do as a cable technician oh common myth about as a technician i'd say the biggest common myth is um any student college student high school student can do what we do oh okay you know you've, oh yeah my brother-in-law he was he, he pulled cable when he was in college yes when 10 15 years ago college students were pulling cable and yes you can still get those guys pulling cable the challenge is that there's a lot more requirements on that cable that people don't even know about and now they're critical requirements like uh, a network cable. Do you know what the pull strength is on a network cable? I don't know because I hire Digital Operations <laughs> Group. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> 25 pounds. Wow. You're not supposed to pull any more than 25 pounds. And so an electrician who pulls a network cable, they can pull an electrician wire all they want. But when you pull on a network cable, it stretches it. When it stretches it right. and you put PoE plus on it, it acts like a fuse and it blows open in that spot. Wow. Same with the kink. Same with a lot of the other things. That, so there's things to do it right. Ohio isn't, uh, doesn't legislate their low voltage cabling, but in many states throughout the United States, they do. And you have to have, be certified to do things, and, and low voltage is inspected. It's not done here yet. But yet. I'm sure it's coming. The legislation is coming. Yeah. Huh? So always does. <laughs> it always does. So, so what would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing in your business right now? Um, I'd say that what most, most business people would say, business owners, I'd say, is finding the right team. Um, oh, employees. So employees. And it's not, it's not like f I'm struggling with it, but you always want to find the right fit person. Yeah. So um, that and, of course, the market's interesting right now. People are, you know, market for hiring is interesting right now. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the biggest one is just, Finding the right team, making sure that they fit in, and uh, and knowing what the right hire, what the, what's the next right hire, you know, that, that kind of thing. So do you have a plan to overcome that? Are you still developing that? So, yes. Um, first off, the, the first thing that for us at Digital Operations was to clearly define who we were and then clearly define who we needed and then clearly define what that job position was and who those you know who those people are and i say i said that in past tense but it's kind of an ongoing process the the more clearly that we define who we are and what we need and what gaps we have the the easier it is to figure out what that next hire is yeah absolutely and you have to continue to review that and are we hitting the mark that we set for ourselves and, and why not maybe you made the wrong mark right and as business changes or you know somebody moves on that and that happens and so, you know, we've we had a, a young IT guy that's worked for us uh, off and on several times. And I love it when he's there. Um, and I'm, like, kind of bummed when he leaves. But he likes doing the IT side, but he, he does gig IT work for, for companies. So when he's off not, a, off, not doing that thing, he'll come and work for us for a couple months in between the yeah. next gig. Um, he does a lot of work with the U.S. government. So... You know, he'll go over and travel, and in between times, he comes and works with us, which is great because we get then his ex expertise on site and don't have to call you as often as far as, hey, we have another question. <laughs> well, even on your own jobs. Yeah. If it's, if it's your job, and I don't have to call you for clarification, then I can just, hey, what, which way does this go in there? Because yeah. we, like, again, I know a little bit about IT, but my expertise is knowing about cabling and pulling it and things like that. And actually, my team is more experienced about it, at it than I am, which is great. Hire people that are smarter than you. It makes your life way easier. That's, <laughs> that is true. Hire people that are smarter than you. Uh, so maybe you've already answered this question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What's the most important lesson that you've learned over your career? Um, I would say... There's so many. I mean, the, the most important lesson I've learned over my career is that it's the people that matters, I think. Um, you know, it's 
So the old saying, the, the customer's always right, mm-hmm. that's not always true. Oh, no. But the customer is the one you have to make happy. Correct. So there's that. But also, um, you have to stand up for your employees. You have to stand up with for your people. So it's about your team. It's about your people. It's about doing right and adding value to people. Whether it's in your team, out of your team, with your clients, with your partners. It's, it's a, true. It's about doing right and adding value. So, and, and that leads into our next question, but what do you think is the most important personality strength for somebody like you? Because not only are you a cabling technician, but now you're a salesperson, you're a boss. You're, right. I'm not even a cable technician anymore. <laughs> right. So how does one become successful in your job? Uh, so persistence mostly. Um, wow. willing to, Willingness to... Try it and fail and go, well, don't do that again. Let's try this a little different way the next time. This, I think that's the, well, I don't want to go into how education is, but that's probably the biggest downfall of education in my mind is that they don't teach people it's all right to fail. You're going to fail. You just need to go, okay, that, that didn't work. Let's try that a different way. Yeah, there's a lot of risk in Absolutely. persistence. <laughs> there is. But really the only risk in persistence is if you're trying to time it. As long as you're persistent and keep getting back up, you're going to get there eventually. It seems like a lot of people are afraid to fail, yet it seems like everybody has failed at some point right? And it, in their journey. <laughs> I think more people, are, more people worry themselves and have more stress about being afraid to fail than when they actually do fail and just go again. I mean, there's more far more stress involved in the anticipation of failure than there is in the actual failure <laughs> of the thing. So is there maybe a story of failure you could share with us about your own? Oh, uh, well, I mean, there's lots of technicals. You know, we'd go do a job and oh, we've had one for you that we went and did some work for you and uh, if the results were not optimal, which meant we had to go back out and redo some work and redo some work again. And it finally was fine. We finally did what we said we were going to do, but the first try was not optimal. So, and we got through that, though. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, you know? that's what, but that's how it works. You, if you're not pushing yourself to do something new, pushing yourself to do something better, well, you, when, you're, when you're pushing yourself to do something new or better, you're going to fail at it. Right, everybody, right. Everybody sucks at something the first time they do it. But the idea is to learn from it and get better each time. Absolutely. So, so what would be one piece of advice you would give to somebody starting out in your career? Unless maybe make, uh, let's say cable technician. Oh, it's a uh, cable technician. Uh, they want to start a cable technician, not digital operations no, group, yeah. and they're going to be in Oregon maybe. Uh, as, <laughs> as, as to be the technician, um, I'd say the most important, just to be a tech, it would be to uh, be open to learn. Be open Especially to learn. in technology, it's and everything's about technology now. You have to be absorbing constantly. There's new technology. There's new ways of connecting things. New wireless connections, uh, fiber connections. All of that's continuous. So if you're not open to learn, and you, you're never going to uh, learn at all, never. So just be up, up and ready to learn constantly. And maybe that goes back to hiring people who are smarter than you or surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you. Hiring people who uh, want to do a good job, yeah. want to learn a new trade or and just do, they want to do something that is interesting and they want to dive in and, and know its ins and outs. Yeah, absolutely. So through all this, have you had a mentor mm. or a, a, some type of coach so, or something? So... Uh, as a business owner, I've had many coaches that never knew that they were my coaches, as in I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and listen to a lot of audiobooks um, and, and read a lot of books. Some that, and, and most of those people, of course, I've never met, but uh, I did have a, a mentor at AT&T when I was first starting there who uh, had been there about 50, 30 years at the time, and he said something along the lines of, you're really good at this, you should be a professional. I'm like, a professional? What's a, what do you mean a professional? I didn't even think a technician could be a professional. And he just kind of showed me that you can be a professional, you can make yourself into a professional in whatever you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, 
you, there's professional garbage collectors because they're good and they're always trying to get better. So everything, you can be a professional. So I think that was the big one when it was, you know, AT&T, when it was technical related. But the other ones just, there's, uh, you know, pastors of my church have been mentors, um, good friends in the church have been mentors, family members. My Again, my dad worked for the phone company, so he's got a lot of technology background. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of, and right now I, I have some of my favorite coaches, favorite authors, that kind of thing. So, Yeah, I think that maybe is a, a question to ask, but what does make one a professional, or when do you know you are a <laughs> professional? Um, I think it's a lot to do with, first off, having done the whole, uh, what's the, the, I'm trying to remember the name, the name of the book or the author, but uh, the 10,000 hours. Yeah. You know, when you've got that that history of, okay, I've, I've worked in technology so long, it's, it's second nature. But you become a professional mostly by deciding you want to be a professional, I think. I think it's more of a mindset. So there's, of course there's the experience of it, but you have to decide. I, I want to be a professional at this. And in order to be a professional, I need to, again, know about it. I need to understand how it works. I need to dive deep. And I have to present myself as professional if you present present yourself i mean if you show up with torn shirts and torn jeans and that's not professional it's just not <laughs> yeah yeah and you know being professional to the career that yeah you know and what that looks you know i, I heard know. i heard uh, something when i was probably about 25 or so somewhere in there from one of my mentors he said uh, people shouldn't judge you by how you look but they do they do Unfortunately, <laughs> so they do, and sometimes just you just plan on that. You have to look the part, right? You I, do. You I, have I, to look the part, um, and sometimes it's kind of an idea of maybe faking it until you make it type of thing. You better look the part. Absolutely, you know? I, I'm sure. Well, I'm guessing that when you started your business, it was like I'm going to look professional, even if I don't know what the heck I'm doing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there, there's 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 still days for like. They look at you and they say, and hopefully our listeners don't don't lose any confidence. You say, some days you're like, what's going on? And you're thinking, I have no idea right now. Hold on a minute. Let me go freak out for a minute and I'll come back and But it's you. kind of that idea of that, maybe that muscle memory where you start thinking like, mm-hmm. I have three ideas of what it probably is and it's going to be one of them. And I think that's maybe the differentiation between Absolutely. maybe the new guy and the experienced Experience. professional. And they say, I've seen things like this, and right. so it probably is leading me to this, right? You know, and and taking it there. I, so, uh, yeah, that for sure in a personal set, and then bringing on the right team members, bringing on other people, like I said, right. who are smarter than you. And I don't mean smarter than you. I don't. I don't really care about IQ. Smarter right. than me at, at what they're doing. So I have a technician that works for me. He's my lead technician. He is just. He's been just doing that for twenty years. Whereas I did other things with at and He just is doing cable and, and routing and, and things like that. And I have an idea how he, we might do it, but sometimes he does it different, and most of the time he does it different. And he's I'm like, oh, that was better. I'm glad you did that. Absolutely. <laughs> People they, who have different ideas and different perspectives and things like that. And, and better experience. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. So one thing I didn't cover in your bio that I'm always pretty fascinated about is your hobbies. So, uh, Tim is the man of many hobbies, and he's <laughs> archery, rock climbing, taekwondo, just to mention a few. Just a few. Yeah. So, um, how have these uh, hobbies enhanced your ability to run your business? I, and I believe they, you can't say, well, they don't. Uh, no, I, I'd say they do, um, but each one enhances in different ways. So, an archer or a, a, a shooter... Uh, knows about focus and knows about well breath control believe it or not I think that's really important just yeah. going and then you release right so uh, in archery it's about focus and it's about um, but it's also about seeing the big picture but focusing when you need to um, so that's one for martial arts self-control um, I think focus there too that's that's certainly a big one um rock climbing again focus is kind of important and when you're when you're doing that um strength you know health that that's been a big one for me so 
that's that's important in pretty much all of those sports. I don't know if you've ever mountain biked like what's called single track. Have you ever done that? I don't, I don't know the difference. I just know the way to not fall off your bike and okay. break your nose type so, of mountain biking. <laughs> so there's road biking and then there's like towpath riding. Oh, I've done that. Like okay. down the hill, try not, again, right. so, watch your brother go off the cliff and yeah, laugh hilariously. I, I, like, <laughs> I like single track, which means weaving through the woods. Yes, that's a lot of fun. And I, I really like doing that. But the biggest trick I learned was you can't look too far ahead. Right? You have to see like what's right here. And you can't let yourself get distracted. The moment you get distracted, you're going to hit a root or a rock and have a, have a nice fly. <laughs> well, th this podcast isn't about me, but, you know, not getting distracted. I had a bobcat jump out, like, right in my face while Whoa. doing that. That's how I almost broke my nose one time. <laughs> yeah, that would distract you. Yes. I mean, there's been a few times I've gone over the handlebars, and it was just that moment of inattention. Yes. When mountain, mountain biking, and it's like, oh, it just just takes that one second. Yes, it does. So, so. I, I've done that in my business a few times, too, going over the handlebars. But Focus. That's okay. Get back up. Go, ow, that hurt. Don't do that again. <laughs> Fix the bike, because you probably bent it up, but keep on going. Focus. Mm -hmm. So what's the one thing, lesson you have learned through your experience at Digital Operations Group that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? Hmm. Well, so I don't know if this is the same, exactly what you're asking, but I, ha I have a favorite word. Okay. My favorite word, and I got it through uh, Dan Sullivan. He's my current the coach author that I really like right now. Um, and uh, the word is appreciation. And it's, it's, everybody knows the word appreciation, right? But it's a cool word. So yeah. appreciation can mean being grateful. If something appreciates, it gains in value. Mm. And if you appreciate a, if you appreciate the situation, you understand. Oh. So the word appreciation, it's got three, three main definitions that if you think about it, all of them when together, if I want to be I need to be grateful for the things I have, I need to understand the situations that I'm in and my clients are in and I need to add value in everything I do. Wow! So that's my there. That's my big. That's my that's that's my learn, one right now. Learn appreciation. Learn appreciation. Hmm. Expand appreciation is actually what I write. I, Ex I write it. Expand. Expand. Expand appreciation in all three of those things. If I do that each day. I think I've done a pretty. Good I think job. we found the episode. Title, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Expand appreciation. So what's the one thing about your your job that almost no one agrees with you about? <laughs> uh, I, we actually hit on it a little bit ago, uh, just that it, it doesn't matter how it looks. Um, it's not that nobody agrees, because I wouldn't have clients if they nobody agreed. But a lot, a lot of a lot of cable guys, oh, it'll it'll be fine. It's it's above the ceiling. Nobody will ever see it. Mm. You know, uh, it does matter because if you're sloppy in the big things, you're probably sloppy in the little things too. Right. Right. So it matters. It matters how it looks. It matters um, how it's attached, how it's wired. Um, the big things matter. The little things matter. Absolutely. So I don't know that nobody agrees with it, but enough other people <laughs> would go, oh, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, you know. Right. Doesn't matter how the, right. yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the big one for me. That I think that that's, Yeah. So what's your favorite productivity hack for other entrepreneurs or for yourself? Um, well, I'm a planner guy. Okay. And I've tried lots and lots of different planners. And so I, what I did is I kind of sampled a little bit out of this one and a little bit out of that one, and I just made up my own. Now, I wouldn't say that's the thing for everybody, but you need to rate a schedule. You need to keep your calendar. So you have a paper planner or you're electronic? Oh, I have both. Oh. So I, I use a paper planner for my daily, um, and I actually fill it out based on my electronic calendars. Um, so I have two calendars. I have my personal calendar, and then I have my team's calendars, so where we're working for each given day. So I'll basically fill out my daily calendar based on those. So I use my electronic calendar to schedule everything, and I use my daily calendar to then schedule my 
time to get when to get things done. And honestly, I'm working on this one. I'm not. I don't have this perfected, but I'm trying to break it into chunks where, okay, this is time to make phone calls. This is time to work on the estimates that I've got to do for Astoria, that, that kind of thing. And then, okay, this is time to go take a look at a site survey. So taking those chunking up my day so that honestly I don't get lost in the minutia and don't do the things that are important. Yeah, that's great. So what would you say is the best time of day for you to get work done? <laughs> yeah, um, I actually have two. Uh, I didn't think the second one was, it's not my favorite time of day to do work, but I've found that I'm very productive. My favorite time to do thinking work, so actually creative thinking about my business, thinking about maybe having to write something, that kind of thing, um, is in the morning. I really like to get into stuff about 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll start thinking through what I'm going to do, and then 8 or 9, 8 to, 8 to maybe 10, I'm actually doing the writing or the creative thoughts, working through finding the best solutions for a client, things like that. When uh, the next time frame is from about 4 to 7, depending, in the evening, and those are the times that I can kind of just cr force myself to crank through the minutia, if you will. It, I, I don't really have the, the uh, thinking wattage by that time in the day, but I can do the, because my brain started, I guess I can do the number, the, the repetitive stuff. I'm one of those people that loves to do something new constantly. So when I'm tired, I'm able to just, okay, I'm too tired to do something new. I can actually just crank through the right. the repetitive. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you wouldn't want to do something uh, new if you weren't an entrepreneur. So. Every, every day. New, right? <laughs> every day is it's, new. It's new every single day. Right. So, right. so what is the most underrated tool that's indispensable for your job? Technician? As a technician? We could, yeah, let's do technician, and then we can do Tim the Boss Man. As a, as a technician, um, I don't know if it's... Uh, to me, it's probably very underrated in the, in, in the industry. It was introduced to me in, at the phone company, and it's what we call snips. Now, most people call them scissors, but they're called snips. I have three. Yeah. Scissors, <laughs> I know what they are. <laughs> scissors are what you use to cut paper yes. and material. Snips are what you do to, to strip wire, score wire... It's they, can probably the most, your, they can cut your finger off. And they're extremely sharp. You can cut through a penny with one of those. I've done yeah. it. Bruises your hand a little bit. You can yeah. do it. They're, they're sharp, and they stay sharp, and they're very, very sturdy. You can kind of use them for a doorstop or a, a chisel or a knife. They're, it's a very useful tool. I carried snips on my person, even as the boss, up until about a year ago. I finally said, oh, I'm not going to carry them anymore, but they're always in my vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, I was trained by a cable technician who did IT as well. So I still have a pair of snips mm -hmm. in my toolbox. Every once in a while, I was, you know, I just, the other day, I used them to cut a zip tie. <laughs> and I was like, I haven't used these things in a long time. That's right. I'm, I'm always typing on the keyboard, I, but. I'm not supposed to touch my tools, but every now and then I still do. So. Yeah, sometimes it's and, fun to do that. And the snips are pretty much the first go-to, because you can use them as a pair of pliers. You can use them as a. <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of anything, so. so here's, the, this is a fun question. What other occupation other than your own would you like to try? Ah, <laughs> uh, and uh, I. I uh, don't want to, so I want to be a business owner. Um, I've kind of always wanted to be a business owner and kept trying and trying and trying in different ways. And aside from just being a very, very successful business owner, meaning having lots of time and lots of money, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know that I, yeah, that, that would be. It wouldn't matter what kind of business. I, I love technology, so the mix is going to be there. Um, I've thought about going into manufacturing, technology manufacturing, Ooh. at some point. Um, uh, hey, I'd love to be involved somewhere or another in something Elon Musk is doing because it just everything he does looks cool to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, or, or somebody like him. There's a lot of really neat technologies out there. So, yeah, I, I think I, I'm going to land in the service industry of technology no matter where I, where I go. That, that's awesome. So a couple of rapid fire questions here at the end. Okay. So what are three books you would recommend to the audience and why? Um, book called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. Mm. Especially to business owners um, and people who are high, higher level management. And it's all about not trying to figure it out yourself, but hiring people who are smarter than you again. Mm. 
Good word. So, yeah. like, you're a who for me. Yes. Because I don't know IT, you know IT. I'm a who for you. Absolutely. And instead of me trying to figure out how to do it, I find a who. So that's a great book. Just It's only been out for about a year. Um, a really old book, uh, The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. Have you ever heard of that book? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's, it's an old one. Og Mandino wrote uh, a whole bunch of fairly small books, and that one was uh, when I was a f- technician. That one really got me learning that uh, what you tell yourself inside your head be- is what you become. And that was a lot of that. And then my other one would be Proverbs. Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. I, I, whether you're a Christian or not, it's just good sense. Three <laughs> excellent, excellent books. Okay. I'm starting a business today, and what is one word of wisdom you would give me? Uh, it's, the one of the, it's one of the two that we already just talked about. Persist or appreciate. I mean, you have to appreciate... You have to add value. If you go out into the world at, with the intent to add value to other people, you'll get there. That's fantastic. So I've asked you a lot of questions today, Tim. Yeah. And there's, is there any questions that you wish I would have asked you? Any questions? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, so I've always... I'm going to kind of go around around sideways at this one. I always right. wanted to write a book. So if you ever if you ever wanted to write a book, what would it want to be? What would it be? I guess would be the question. If I wanted to write a book, I would write That would be Yeah, that yeah. would be your question to me. As well. you yeah, ask, if you ever wanted to write a book, what would it be? I want to write a book about how it takes lots of little incremental changes to get exponential growth. Hmm. So that that's what I I want to write that book. Minor multiplication. There's, <laughs> there you go. There's so, your book title. There you go. Well, mine was incremental to exponential. That's that's kind of I've got it. It's in my head. I've been kicking around a title for a long time, and even subtitles. So there. Well, if I could quote one of our other uh, guests in the Journey podcast, just do it. There you go. Just do it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a quote from a person or that's a, <laughs> that's a long, long. Well, time. it's just 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 go and. If you're going to do it, right. just uh, get up get up today and just go do it. Just go you know, do it. Right. And, and write that book. That's one so. of those, hmm, I'll do that in the other three hours of the day that I'm at. <laughs> exactly. So those incremental changes will hopefully free up your time exactly. so that you can get there. So That's how I've gotten so far where I'm at. It's yeah. just little changes, little bits at a time. Well, it's been great spending time with Tim from Digital Operations Group. Thanks for being here, Tim. Tell us where our listeners can find you online, uh, your website, your social media handle. Um, So I think I'm, I don't really use Facebook that much, but I think I'm Tim Smith on Facebook, just Tim Smith. I'm Timothy Smith on LinkedIn. And then, um, of course, I have digitaloperationsgroup.com or digitalops.group. That's uh, the, the web pages, and both of those will get you to the same place. And I have those same things on Facebook, LinkedIn, all the different channels at digitaloperationsgroup.com. Oh, absolutely. Well, great. Go check out uh, Tim Smith with Digital Operations Group. He's a great uh, partner for us here at Astoria, but could be a great partner for you if you're running an MSP or an IT service. Uh, and you can uh, check out their website and uh, see more of what their work is. Reach out to Tim and see how uh, he can partner with you or just learn more of his knowledge. I know it's always great to spend time with Tim. It's always great spending time with you. And thanks so much for being on the Journey Podcast today. I really appreciate it. Thank you much.